Researchers from the University of Oxford have recently demonstrated three-dimensional data processing in one operation cycle using a single processor. This breakthrough holds the potential to dramatically parallelize AI computing, helping AI models become larger. Artificial intelligence, AI in short, is getting more and more powerful. And the power of AI actually comes from AI models that are larger and larger. The fundamental step of AI processing is matrix vector multiplication. To enable more powerful AI, we want to implement as many matrix vector multiplication as possible. In our previous work, we have shown that by using wavelength division multiplexing, you can parallelize matrix vector multiplication. That gives you one matrix matrix multiplication. And in this work, by adding radio frequency as an extra degree of freedom, we can even parallelize this matrix matrix multiplication and pushing the power of AI to a higher level. This higher dimensional processing is realized in the photonic computing platform, enabled by the incorporation of the radio frequency degree of freedom, alongside the wavelengths and spatial degree of freedom, propelling the parallelism of computing to a level beyond that can afford it by wavelengths and space alone. A 25 time enhancement experimentally and over 100 times theoretically. We are illustrating how higher dimensional processing works. Without loss of generality, let us assume we have a 3 by 3 photonic tensor core. The weights are encoded in the photonic memories in each unit cell. For more information on how the photonic memory works and how a direct multiplication is realized, please refer to our previous videos. Now, Assume we are dealing with this matrix vector multiplication. First, let's look at the conventional ways of solving this. Using digital electronics, you encode the values in voltage pulses and send them to different channels. By doing this, you have used the spatial dimension. At time t1, you send one vector. And at the next time t2, you send the second vector. Using digital photonics, again, you encode the values in transmission pulses by using wavelength division multiplexing. The two vectors can be sent simultaneously in a single time t1. Because different wavelengths will not talk to each other, the two input vectors are processed in parallel. Only a single time T1 is required because another dimension is used, the wavelength dimension. We can use continuous time data instead of digital pulses to further enhance the parallel computing. Within time T1, we can use one radio frequency to carry one vector. And use another radio frequency to carry the other vector. If you add this capability to wavelength division multiplexing, you can implement many such matrix multiplications in parallel. This adds the third dimension for your data processing. Turning your square into cube. Hi, you might be wondering how does the signal look like when you multiplex many RFs instead of only two. Here, I will show you what will happen if you multiplex 50 RF signals. This is the time domain signal of a multiplex RF that contains 50 different RF frequencies. It is a complex time domain signal and you can't really tell what are the 50 values you encode in this multiplex RF. But if you look at the frequency domain signal of the same input signal, you realize that the values you input are encoded nicely in each independent RF. And here I only show you one multiplex RF. If I have another multiplex RF, and I try to add that RF to the existing one, this is what will happen. 
the values are added independently on each individual RF that give you the addition results. I think as the technology continues to evolve, uh, adoption of our photonic architecture might actually pave way for more efficient and powerful AI uh, architecture. And this kind of architecture could actually be used in numerous domains. And it's quite exciting where this work can lead to the future of the theoretical computing.